and welcome to Amanda Bug Crafts, episode 96. What's up everybody? My name's Amanda, but you may know me on the internet as Mando Bug, and this is my channel here on YouTube where I share the things that I am making. Starting the shot with something I've learned. This week, I have been struggling to learn. Eh. <laughs> So I got this amazing braid of fiber from Wool Gatherings last year. It's so beautiful. It's very skunk, Cruella de Vil, and I just, I love it. So this is it unraveled, and you can kind of tell just from the me handling it, it's because of the alpaca and the silk, it's like very easy to disturb. It's, it's flying actually around, and I don't think my camera is picking that up, but I can see it flying around in the air. It's probably in my coffee now. Um, <laughs> I mean, this just happens sometimes when you've got fiber that's so soft and so light. But I am struggling so hard to spin this fiber. It has been so difficult. I started spinning it thinking that I would do a, well now I can't even remember, like a two-ply or a three-ply, and I don't know what I'm doing now. I have just barely anything on the bobbin and it's not very consistent and I've been struggling to keep it consistent and if you look I don't know can let's get real close can you see kind of how there's like fibers sticking up off of my singles so I'm a little frustrated because I know when you over twist your singles you start losing the softness of the hand and this is really soft fiber when you touch it. Once you start adding twist, I feel like it loses its softness relatively quickly. Um, and it's also really slick. And maybe I'm just trying to spin it too thick. That might be the problem. Um, I haven't tried spinning it thinner, but I've really been struggling to spin it this at this thickness for a single and not over twist it and have it stay together though. So, I don't, I haven't worked on this much after I started getting frustrated, beginning to become frustrated with this, because I, I don't know that it's going to turn out the way that I want it to, and that really kind of makes me avoid finishing or working on a project. I don't know if you guys are the same way, but once it wasn't turning out the way I wanted it to and I was getting frustrated, I put it down and I haven't picked it up in a while. So... I need to keep playing with it though because I need to learn more about spinning this fiber. It's my first time spinning anything relatively close. It is a 50-50 alpaca silk blend. Oh, you can see what I paid for it. <laughs> From wool, gather wool gatherings. I got it at um, Madrona last year. And um, do you guys have any advice for me on this alpaca silk? I've found that it is easier to do a um, a more woolen draft on it because the short forward is just it's just such a slick fiber that it wasn't working well for me so I was allowing the twist to enter up into my fiber and pull from there but what happens with that because this is an alpaca silk blend um, it snags the white is the silk, it snags the silk, and the silk is such a long staple, it starts pulling the silk from the back without pulling the alpaca. So my fiber bunches up into this little black cloud of jumbled alpaca as the white silk's being pulled from the back. Am I explaining that correctly? You know how if you do like a long basting stitch on some fabric and you pull it and it cinches up the middle? That's essentially what's happening to my fiber. This silk is cinching up the alpaca and it's just it's just been difficult to spin. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm now I'm covered. I'm covered, you guys. This is all off my pants. Um Alpaca is just, man, and boy is it something else to work with. So um, I would love any advice since this is a new to me spin and I'm still learning a lot about it and I'm feeling a little frustrated about it. So um, if you've ever spun a 50-50 alpaca silk blend, um, let me know your advice, your experience. Um, head, steer me in the right direction if you know of a good resource on it. Um, I haven't really done much, much research on my own. Um, 
but yeah, so that is something I'm learning, actually. <laughs> I don't feel like I've mastered this alpaca silk yet. Um, so moving on to finished objects. Uh, I only have one finished object, and it's hanging on a work in progress. So we'll kind of merge the two together. So um, I'll show you my finished object. It is a emoji heart eye progress keeper or stitch marker um, and I absolutely love him I think he's one of my favorite progress keepers I have because every time I comment on social media to things that I love that's the emoji I use and so it's really cool to see it hanging on my progress or on my work in progress because it's like I'm saying I love this guy <laughs> Um, so that's that's my only finished object this week. Um, I actually have these up in my Etsy store now if you want one for yourself. Um, yeah, emoji heart eyes. So as far as progress goes on this work in progress, I pulled out the Speckle and Pop shawl that I was working on by Stephen West. I have been calling mine the Speckle and Goth because all these dark stripes that you see were supposed to be pops of color, but I had a goth garden mini skein set from Nitty and Color, and so that's what my pops of color are. They're actually just goth colors. So it's almost black green, almost black red, almost black purple. There is actually a black, um, and then a very dark, almost black pink. So I've been striping those along, and then you fade your main colors into each other. So this was my first main color. It's um, Schmutzarella's Dude Base in something bruises. It had to do with bruises. Um, and then in the middle was Squish Fiber Arts MCN. Don't remember the colorway. I will link my project page down below so you can find um, which yarns I used if you're interested since apparently I can't remember. Um, and now I just faded this purple into this dark blue which is a dream in color smushy possibly with cashmere I'm not sure again that'll be in on my project page but I'm just like so slow going at this knit um, this is still clue one so this was a mystery knit along when it came out and I was not able to keep up whatsoever um, you can see where my emoji is is where I picked this project up again and I probably knit on it almost monogamously for three days and that's all that I made so there's just a lot of knitting for the first clue of this shawl I still have each one of these wedges I still have at least 10 more to go in the blue if not more so <laughs> then I think I get to pick up along the bottom and do some fun stuff and I think there's even a brioche option in this shawl so I'm loving it. I'm just finding that I'm not very patient with knitting it. I get frustrated that it's taking so long and then I stop working on it. So um, I tried to make a point this last week to really put a dent in this because I do, you know, I've been thinking about all of the works in progress that I have going on. I have a ton of whips. I have a t that, like bags of whips down here. Um, and you know, I try to tell myself, you know, if I really don't want to work on it, I need to frog it. And this was one of those projects I visited, visited, and was like, okay, am I going to legitimately work on this or do, should I just frog it? Am I not frogging it because it's got all the mini skeins and that's basically lost yarn? Or, you know, so I decided, no, we'll, we'll see. If I can knit on it for a couple days, that means I really still want to finish it. And I did, so... I think it's going to go back into hibernation though. <laughs> I've got some other projects I want to work on instead. So, you know, that's the struggle, right? You guys like you get excited about a project, you start it and you get into it and then you get excited about another project and then another project. And I'm having a hard time deciding, like figuring out why I'm not finishing projects and I need a better system for starting projects to make sure that I'm only starting projects that I want to fish, finish. But I really think a lot of it comes down to me not being patient with the project. Um, yeah, I just, 
I don't know. Maybe that makes me a product knitter way more than a process knitter. I enjoy the process, but a lot of what guides what I make is the product. So, um, food for thought. I only have one other work in progress that I've actually been working on since I last talked to you guys, and that is my hand spun socks. So these are the Opposing 3-ply sock yarn that I spun. It was Superwash Targi from Cottage Dye Works, which, you know, I don't, I hate to say things without remembering 100% if it's fact, but I think that I was doing some research and I saw that Cottage Dye Works is actually a local to me dyer, which I didn't know um, because this fiber was gifted to me from someone not local. So, um, but yeah, I'll have to check out some more of her stuff. But, um, I don't think there was a color name for the fiber, uh, but it was this very fun springy sunset, not sunset, well kind of sunset, you know, sometimes because of, I think, pollution, the sunset can be orange and pink, but there are also the, some green in here, but the green's really been toned down after the spin. Um, in, in the cake, the green almost just looks yellow. Uh, there was a lot of white space in the braid that I spread out throughout the spin, and so you can definitely see that showing up throughout my socks. The white just kind of puts like a whitewash over the whole thing and tones the whole socks down because the fiber was very bright and vibrant. Um, it's very interesting to, um, to consider these things. Okay, so I do just need to knit up the leg of these socks, and next time I am looking forward to having a gusset heel flap from the toe up. Um, there is a couple of heels that are like that in that sock knitting masterclass book that I shared last video. So, um, yeah, but that's all I've been working on this week. I... You know, I mentioned to you guys that I'm working more hours, so I have less downtime at home, and I'm trying to adjust to the new work-life balance. So, um, so yeah, a lot less crafting than usual, um, and I'm still trying to find the best times to record. I this morning is up. I'm up before everyone else. Although Emily is now up, you may hear her popping her bubble wrap that I use to wrap my charm. She found some and asked me if she could pop it. So. <laughs> Um, moving on to current events. So the last week of my springtime basket crochet along sponsored by Scassell has been released and you have until April 15th to get a photo of your finished basket sent into them to be entered for prizes. It's US and Canada only. Um, and then also my Oh Yes Cowl, I extended the deadline for that out through the end of March. So I think that's like a week left to finish up a cowl and get it posted in the thread. Um, I think I may have said one post per person, but for this one I'm going to go ahead and allow as many cowls as you make you can post. So um, I do need to fix that. Um, I didn't realize I had done that until someone brought it up. I think I may have um, just kind of copied and pasted rules from another craft, -a -thon craft along that, um, that had one entry per person. So. Um, moving on to Let's Chat. So it was shearing day at Lori's house a couple weeks ago, I think. And so that was a lot of fun. Um, I think there were eight or nine sheep that got shorn that were sheared. <laughs> uh, and so I just spent the day with Lori. Um, she made chili that was so yummy. And I just helped skirt the fleeces as they came off the sheep and bagged them up. So I'm pretty excited to help her process through those. She's got some really nice fleeces. There was one sheep that was new to her and this was the first time that we were shearing it. And it is a Black Mountain Welsh sheep. It's a very, very black sheep, the only true black sheep, um, but its wool is not the softest, so I'm super curious to see how that pro feels once it's processed. Um, it may be something better for felting, but we'll, we won't know until we start playing with it, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and um, yeah, so also I made some homemade caramel sauce for my coffee since we have last chatted and it's so good I had to tell you about it. I'd never made homemade caramel before let alone a caramel sauce and uh, I did struggle a little bit with it because the instructions said that it should have started turning an amber 
yellowish brownish color within like five to ten minutes and mine was not but I so, so real talk I've been cooking and following recipes long enough now that I feel comfortable not actually using measuring equipment I kind of eyeball a lot of things um, and so for something like making caramel sauce you need to have a little bit more accuracy in your sugar to water ratio <laughs> and I think I had too much water so it actually took me closer to 30 to 40 minutes for enough of the water to boil out that it could actually start cooking the sugar or at least that's what I think happened because this was my first time making it but um, I did eventually get the sugar to start to brown and um, I did get my sauce made and I've been putting it in my coffee so the recipe I'll use I used I will link down below it was for an iced salted caramel latte uh, but I've been putting the salted caramel sauce in my hot coffee it doesn't matter which way you go it's delicious in both it's delicious either way so um, I highly recommend trying it out if you like salted caramel in your coffee because it was really good and you can use the sauce for anything else um, on pies on ice cream you know whatever brownies <laughs> it's just a delicious salted caramel sauce so um, I did want to share that um, and then it, Emily came in here earlier and interrupted me a couple times so I let her talk about a craft that she did for Easter at Lori's house so I will go ahead and show that to you guys why don't you show everybody what you made I'm Stephanie and I made this for me because I saw him and so she will but I like it something. <laughs> you just like that knitting robot, huh? Yeah, the knitting robot. The knitting robot. Yeah. Well, are you gonna show them how you made it? Why don't you tell them how you made it? I made it for Grandma House and I, I put stripes and I, I put those for. You put stripes? Yes. They can't see. You gotta show them. There you go. And what are what are these? Those are. Hmm. Hmm. Are they like pom poms? Yes. And how did you put them on there? Guys, every time I put the pom poms on there, now got this. Yeah, but how does it stay? How come it's not falling off? Guys, that do not why for that. Did you use glue? Yeah, cause. Uh, some of me just smoke with you. Say something. Uh, I saw I need this. Say popping punches. No, I saw I need this. I saw this. I'm gonna make it too close. This way. Right there. Alright, so that is all I have for this video. I know it's very short, but I have very limited crafting time now, so, um, I'm just gonna do my best to keep checking in with you guys. Um, I would love it to be weekly. Again, no guarantees. Um, it just might be a little inconsistent during this transition time as I find what's going to work best um, here on out. Um, but for me, today, now after I finish recording this, I have um, all these new designs that Hi. I want to get going. Hi, Emily's back! Um, so I'm going to get to designing some more things <laughs> and probably not finishing them because let's be real. <laughs> All right, you guys, until next time, happy crafting. Bye.